Hey, and welcome back. With Halloween just around the corner and a storage room full of orphan drums, I spent the last few weeks trying to think of a project to combine the two and give me a reason to use up one of these drums. When I was driving around last week, it suddenly hit me that a standard drum has a similar shape to a pumpkin, so I figured why not take one of these orphan toms and turn it into a jack-o'-lantern, or in this case, a drum-o'-lantern. So I settled on using this 13 by 11 tom from an old beat up percussion plus kit that I wasn't going to be able to salvage. This drum already had a broken lug, which is quite common with these cheap cast lugs on import kits, but I wasn't worried about that because for my vision, I was planning to remove one lug from each of the top and bottom side to give me a larger surface area for the jack-o'-lantern cutout. So to get started, I went ahead and unscrewed all the tension rods and removed both hoops and heads from the drum. Next. I used a screwdriver to remove all the remaining lugs, along with the tom post mount. Once I had everything removed, I could turn my attention to getting rid of the wrap. In a lot of cases, I'll have to use a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive holding the wrap onto the shell, but on these cheaper drums, they'll only use a little bit of adhesive, so I can usually just pry it off. It came off pretty easily, and I was also able to rip the badge and grommet out as well without using any tools. So now, with a bare shell, I went up to my garage to start the process of plugging holes that I would no longer need. In this case, I needed to plug four small lug holes along with four small holes from the tom bracket. In addition to those eight holes, I'd also need to plug one slightly larger hole for the air vent and then a much larger hole where the tom post would actually go through the shell. For the smaller holes, I had the appropriate size dowels on hand that would fit mostly through tension, but I added some wood glue to make sure they would bond permanently. For each one, I'd insert the dowel, making sure it reached the interior of the shell, and then come back with a flush cut saw and trim it. After that, I'd go over it with some sandpaper to help it match the contour of the shell. For the largest hole, where the tom post passed through, I actually ran downstairs and grabbed a cut off of an orphan shell and cut out a plug with the hole saw. Unfortunately, it was a bit too large, so I had to spend a bit of time sanding it until I could get it to fit in the hole, but eventually it all worked out and I added some wood filler to help fill the voids in between. For the last and final hole, the air vent, I couldn't find anything on hand, so I went downstairs and grabbed a drumstick to use as a plug. This works really well because all drumsticks have a taper at the neck, so you can fit a wide variety of holes by using some portion of the stick. This is a great way to reuse some sticks that are past their playing life and a good reason to keep them around. Once I had all the holes plugged, I went over again with sandpaper and then got the drum ready to paint. I started off with the interior of the shell and decided to paint it black in order to help offset it from the outside more. It's a bit tricky to get inside and get good coverage, but after a few minutes, I had the whole inside of the shell covered pretty well. While I waited for the shell to dry, I went over to my local Ace Hardware to pick up some paint for the outside of the shell. I ended up going with this bright orange to help sell the Halloween pumpkin theme. Once I got home, I grabbed some painter's tape to cover up all the lug holes to prevent any of the orange paint from spraying to the inside. And instead of taping the bearing edges, I ended up just setting some cardboard on top to prevent any overspray from getting inside. I went ahead with my first coat of paint and decided to call it a night. The next morning, I added another coat of paint to get some better coverage and then shifted my attention over to the hardware. I could have easily left the hardware chrome, but I decided to paint it black as it would be a lot more cohesive with the theme for this drum. I wouldn't advise doing this on drums you intend to play, especially for the hoops, because over time, with the drum being hit, it's going to wear off. But for this drum, which is more of a decorative piece, I figured it would hold up fine. While the hardware dried, I went downstairs to find a jack-o'-lantern graphic on the internet, and once I found something I liked, I printed it off and cut out the eyes, nose, and mouth. I figured I'd trace this out like a template onto the shell and then cut out after. I could have just freehanded this, but I'm no artist, so this works best for me. I added some painter's tape onto the shell before attaching my template because one, I wanted to prevent the tear out on this nice clean orange finish, but two, allow me not to worry about cutting perfectly on the lines and having the sharpie left on the shell once I'm finished. I taped my template pieces down to the shell before tracing, just to make sure I had a look that I wanted, and then used a sharpie to trace around all the pieces. I then got my drill out to cut some pilot holes with a 3 8 inch drill bit. These holes allow me to have enough room to get my jigsaw blade in and start cutting each shape. In order to prevent tear out on the inside of the shell, 
I drilled into a scrap piece of 2x4, and that really prevented any tear out on the inside. I used a very fine blade on my jigsaw to cut out these shapes, and honestly, it didn't really matter if it was too precise with my cuts, as it's meant to look freehand. This process went pretty smoothly, and I was certainly happy with the results after. So now with the pattern cut out, I took the shell and hardware downstairs to begin reassembly. I started by screwing all the lugs back onto the shell, and then I could add heads, hoops, and tension rods to secure it all together. I decided to go ahead and cut out a large opening in the bottom head so that I could potentially sit this drum over a light to get a cool effect. But after that, this drum was finished. Now since I know plenty of people don't have an extra drum lying around to do this sort of thing, I've decided I'll add a bonus project onto this video and show you another way you can achieve a similar effect without permanently altering a drum like this. I started out by taking an old drum head and taping up the collar with painter's tape. After I had tape all around it, I came back with a razor blade and trimmed it flush to the collar so that I could paint the entire head with a nice clean finish. Then I went over the head with the same orange spray paint and let it dry. In full transparency, I did also add one to two more quick coats over this drum off camera. After I had a nice clean orange canvas to work with, I removed the painter's tape from around the collar. Next, I went downstairs to find a drum to put this on and decided on using this small 16 inch bass drum I had in my storage room. I'd recommend actually seating this head and tensioning it before beginning the process of cutting out the jack-o'-lantern because these heads have some wave in them and tensioning them will give you a much more solid surface to cut through. So exactly as before, I followed the same process of printing out a graphic, cutting it out with scissors, and then taping those graphics onto the head to trace the eyes, nose, and mouth onto the canvas. I then used a razor blade to cut out these shapes one by one, and although this is fairly simple, I'd advise you to be careful with what kind of head you're using to make sure you're getting all the way through. The head I used was two ply, and at certain points, I found that I wasn't cutting through the second layer and had to come back with scissors or a razor blade to clean it up. After some time, I had this one all finished, and both of these drum lanterns were complete. I think they turned out pretty good, and it's a perfect way to not only show your festive Halloween spirit, but add some of your personality into it by using a drum. I really love how the tom shell variation turned out, especially once you add a light inside. The cutout really pops, especially in a dark room. But honestly, both of them look pretty cool in the right lighting. Obviously, one of these is a much more permanent option than the other, but I hope this video inspires you to try at least one version of this. Leave a comment down below to let me know which one you prefer, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. Until next time, thanks.